Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today I would like to tell you about um, how it is to act on yourself. So action on itself <laughs> in more maybe formal language, the regular representation of a group. So what's the idea? Well, let's just jump right into it. It's best to be explained on an example. So um, the hedral groups, pretty nice groups, uh, symmetry groups of regular n -guns. So for example, the hedral group D4, it's a bit confusing. D4 is a symmetry group of the foregone of the square, but it has eight elements. So D4 has eight elements. It's a symmetry group of the square. And this picture is a really nice illustration why it actually has eight elements. So obviously, or not, maybe not obviously, but a, a symmetry of the square is a rotation. And well, it's an order four rotation. So if you rotate this picture along this axis here, the green axis, but there's a slightly more subtle um, operation, namely a reflection, and that's an order two operation along this axis. So this axis here is a reflection. So for example, it would reflect this letter F to this letter F here. And as usual, um, the square is only marked in order for you to see actually really is a symmetry. So here you can see the symmetry. So if you rotate it, if you um, reflect it, uh, all of those images will kind of uh, well go to itself again, right? So kind of the whole image will go to itself. And the only reason why letters are used here is to kind of make it more visible. And you see those little eight um, alcoves here. And these are really the, you can identify them as the eight elements of the, of the dihedral group. Anyway, so let me denote the green action by A. Let me denote the blue action as a blue action, really nice blue action, the red action by B. And then we have this dihedral group in general would, would be uh, generated by an element of order N, A, and an element of order 2, B. And there's a symmetry groups of the N-guns, which is a really nice picture. So they naturally act on an N-gun. But there's a mild problem here. Um, it's exactly related to this kind of funny notation. So four actually means that the group was of order eight. So n actually means that the group was of order two n. And what you're kind of missing in this description is a nice way to encode uh, the reflections if you want. So the representation is a bit too small, although it comes up naturally uh, from the viewpoint of the Hebrew groups. It's just a bit too small. And kind of the way to fix it is to actually double it in this case, everything, and you well, I would just call it D4 acts on D4. So in this illustration, my order A, a is now uh, red for some reasons, because of course I stole the picture and I was too lazy to uh, change the colors. Anyway, so the operation A goes like this and it goes on the outside in the opposite direction. So just following the uh, operation of uh, the arrows. And the blue one is the operation B and it connects the two um, and you don't need any orientations because it's of order two. So secretly those edges are oriented in both directions uh, like this. Uh, this is called the Cayley graph. And in some sense, a correct object to act on because you want to act on yourself is kind of the Cayley graph. That's, if you want, you can approximately think of this as an underlying geometric object. So instead of taking the n-gun, in this case, we double the n-gun. And as you can see now, you have now eight vertices in this, in this picture, of course, eight, eight, four times four, so four in the middle and four on the outside. And those eight vertices, you could think of them as group elements or as vectors of a representation. And this action on itself, if you think of it as vectors, is called the regular representation. And the point here is why this is slightly nicer than this representation. I mean, this representation is awesome for the dihedral group, but it doesn't really make sense for a general group. This representation, the regular representation, every group can act on itself. So it really does make sense for any, really any group, right? So you kind of find a slightly nicer op geometric object, which you could think of as being the Cayley graph if you want to. Um, and the group just acts on itself. In other words, in some sense, <laughs> in some sense at least, um, the correct symmetry that is, reflects a given group is the group itself, which is a little bit head wavy, of course, because, well, the, the square is certainly a very nice symmetric object where you can let D4 act on. But anyway, so here the problem is solved. So this representation here has order eight, and so does our, our group as also order eight which is exactly kind of what we need. And in general, uh, the regular representation has of course dimension of, um, of the given group, uh, the order of the given group as a dimension. Okay, so, um, and now let's look at the matrices. Uh, while you've initialized everything here, let's say we work with C, 
doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, so linearized would be this object here. That's now the regular representation. And everything will act by a matrix. Um, I don't display the other ones because they are eight by eight matrices and I don't have enough space on this slide, but it's really easy to illustrate them. And this is how it works. You write down the eight basis elements, which are just the group elements. And the action um, of A from the left here is it sends it to A, of course. It sends A to A squared. It sends A squared to A cubed. It sends A cubed to it because this is when uh, it kind of uh, turns over, right? We have an uh, order four rotation. It sends B to AB. It sends AB and so on. So this is kind of the action matrix the left action matrix of A. Um, and as you can see, the trace of this matrix is actually zero. And you could check the same for B as well. So if you write down B, it's again an eight by eight matrix, not really hard to write down. Then you will realize that the trace of this matrix is actually zero. And the trace of the identity matrix is not really surprisingly eight because it's an eight by eight matrix. And this is general. So now let's uh, the, the fact, so the regular representation is just the group acting on itself. And let's say we use the left regular representation, then the action is by left multiplication. Mild difference, there's also a right regular representation, but let's not worry about that. And it really makes sense for every group. So we always have um, uh, re the regular representation of dimension order of G. And the regular representation makes sense for any group. And the cool fact here, and we already saw that in this little example with the dihedral group, is that the character of this regular representation, so I call the regular representation R, the character is really, really simple. It's the order of G on the trivial conjugacy class, so for the identity matrix, and it's zero everywhere else. And this really just follows from being a group, because if you're a group and you act um, on, on some element, so x times y, left action, so x is the acting element. And the only way you can get an element on the diagonal, so that would contribute to uh, the group, to, to the trace, would be some equation like this. But if you have an equation like this, because in a group, you can just console uh, y and you get x equals 1. So for any group, this is true. For any group, the regular representation, as long as you don't have the identity matrix, um, will always have trace 0. So it's a really, really simple character. And the crucial fact about this representation um, for k equals c at least, so this is where you again need the complex numbers, is that the regular representation decomposes into a simple representation and each simple representation appears uh, with, its, with its dimension. So we'll do an ex explicit example in a second. But this is kind of the point. And of course, you see the same for the characters. Um, so this is kind of the point. So the regular representation uh, uh, contains all simple representations contains all simple representations, as uh, you don't miss a single one, and each one appears with uh, dimension, with, if it's of dimension five, it appears five times. If it's of dimension six, it appears six times. A really cute and nice result. So let's have a look at an example. So again, um, well, the link is in the description. I used magma to uh, generate the, to, uh, the simple characters of the dihedral group. Uh, this is how they look like. So there are five of them. And remember that you can read of the dimensions in the first column. So almost everything is of dimension one, except one is of dimension two. And if you would check now, my eight dimensional representation that I wrote down actually breaks apart into those representations here. So one, two, three, four, and all of them appear once. And the five is of dimension two, so it appears two times. So that, that's the, the general result, right? You just look at the character table, um, count the numbers in the dimensions, and if you have multiplicities, then it appears as many times, whatever kind of number you see here. So this would be a five, the fifth one would be a five times. And what you can see here is this nice, uh, nice symmetry. So one, 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 two. So one squared, because it appears once plus and so on, four times one squared. So of course, four, not very exciting, plus two squared is eight, which is is also four, of course. So together it's eight, which is the order of our group D4. And this is again, uh, well, it follows from this decomposition. So if you square the numbers in the first column of the character table and take the sum, you always get the order of the group. And that's, uh, that's actually pretty, pretty nice. And if you take the, the weighted sum of the columns, um, then you, you actually get uh, zero for all the others. So, so I already did the first one, you get the order of the group. 
Um, so if you do this one, for example, you can already see you get zero. If you do this one, you get zero as well because you have one, 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 one. That's um, together four, and then you minus two and it appears twice. So you have minus four, four plus minus four is zero. And that's again, the miracles that you see in a semi-simple case. Okay, to wrap up, the regular representation is kind of the most naive representation uh, that you can think of. Well, maybe the most naive one is a trivial one. There's a second most naive representation that you could think of. It's just the group acting on itself. And it's pretty nice. It's actually a really, really nice representation. It's a very simple character and beautiful combinatorics within the character. For example, this decomposition into simple modules, which is pretty cute. And it's therefore crucial for the theory because it kind of uh, contains all simple modules. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.